Hi, I'm Mike. Working on the ranch can be a job that can take up a lot of your time. And if you aren't careful, it can take up all your time. That's why it's important for us to find time for ourselves, our kids, and our marriage. Sometimes you have to escape on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome back, and thanks for joining us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Please subscribe and help us continue the journey with you. There always seems to be something that needs done around here. If you follow the project list on Tuesdays, you know that all too well. But on the ranch, we not only grow calves and cows and grass and gardens, but we also seem to cultivate work. It's all around us and it never seems to end. Each and every day, there's more work to be done. But there is a big danger in ranching of burning yourself out. Recently, we just moved past a big hurdle of the year and we sold calves. We have a little bit of a break and we get a chance to get a bunch of little small jobs done around here until we need to preg check the cows and see who's pregnant and who isn't. When we do that, we'll also vaccinate and deworm. But this little lull, gives us a chance to reconnect and stay close as a family. The kids are a very important part of that. Everybody tells me to enjoy them while you can. Someday you'll wake up and they'll be going off to college and I wholeheartedly believe that. That's why I really don't have a problem stopping work to go to the park or just play with them in the yard. But another part of the family is made up of just Aaron and I. We started this whole mess together and together we're gonna get through it. But still, just like taking the kids to the park or taking time out of your day to reconnect with them, occasionally, Aaron and I have to take time to reconnect with each other. And sometimes, that takes a little bit of help from our friends. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Stephanie. And we're uh, kidnapping Mike and Aaron for a night out in the town. And uh, the town is a little ways away from us. They don't get a break very often, so we're gonna take them out and uh, have a good time, and we'll see what happens. Before we can get that far though, we have to do some chores. Even though we're only gonna be gone for a little over 24 hours, there are the animals that require daily attention. They're gonna be missing that attention while we're gone. Since we're only gonna be gone for a day, I'm not calling on a neighbor to come and do chores while I'm gone. Our neighbor Gary will drive by and make sure everything looks okay, but we should be able to set up everybody with an extra day's worth of food and water to get them through. We have a few hours before our kidnappers arrive, so we're gonna start with the pigs and get them set up. Temperatures are supposed to be above freezing while we're gone, so water isn't an issue with them, but they will need food. They eat like a bunch of, well, pigs, and giving them a few extra bags won't hurt. Our feeder will actually hold about 200 pounds of food. That gives them 20 pounds a piece to make it through the day. That should work, and it should keep them happy. The chicken should be okay as well with about 200 pounds of food in their feeder, but it's the bulls that are gonna give us the most problem this morning. Jumping on a four-wheeler to check on them, we find a bull out in the ditch on the highway. It's not good. More than likely, he'll stay in the ditch. He'll eat the grass that's still growing there, but there is the chance that he could wander into traffic, and that would end very badly. How did he get out? Well, that's a good question. One that we hope that he will answer himself. I've found that cows and bulls have a pretty good memory, although they don't think about the repercussions of what that memory may cause. Rather than try to take this four-year-old bull back down and around and through the gate back into the bull pasture, we're gonna push him along the fence. He knows where he got out, and he'll more than likely go back through that exact same spot and go back through it to get back to where he belongs. He knows he's in trouble, and soon enough, he gives up his secret escape point so that we can go fix it. After he's back where he's supposed to be, then we can grab a couple of bales of hay to feed these guys while we're gone. Also, it'll keep them occupied while we fix the fence. So it's off to grab the tractor and a couple of bales. Then, into the bull pasture. 
The bulls live in here all fall, winter, and most of the spring. This time of the year, they're pretty docile. They've already finished all their work for the year, and now all they worry about is eating, and they eat a lot. A full-grown bull will eat about 50 pounds of hay per day. These bales weigh right around 1,400 pounds, so these two bales should last them about five days apiece, maybe. All they really have to do is eat. Wi-Fi is no good over here, and they have no thumbs to play video games, so they eat. One bale is rolled out, the other one's placed in the feeder. At midnight, our alpha bull keeps a close watch over what's going on, and hopefully, we'll keep the other guys in line until we can get back to that fence. Over to the horses, who would all like a bale also, and a little bit of love. After grabbing some fencing supplies, it's back to the fence. This fence is a royal pain in my behind. The bull pasture borders the highway, which the state of Wyoming technically owns, making it the state's fence. Each year, they're supposed to inspect it and maintain it. Each year, they say it's fine. And each year, we have a bull that figures out how to get out. And each year, I end up fixing it. As you can see, the rest of the fence in the bull pasture, we've beefed up a bit to keep the bulls in. They don't go through our fence, but they always know how to get through this one. Some staples are replaced, some extra fence is wired up, and hopefully, we're good to go. Aaron's been waiting for me in the house, and it's not long before Nick and Stephanie arrive. The kids will be staying at Aaron's mom's while we're gone, and soon, we're on the road. Headed about 150 miles away to Rapid City, South Dakota. Rapid City has a population of around 75,000 people, and as we get closer, the traffic becomes something that us folks from the country don't deal with much. Let's go ahead and stop on the interstate. I knew it was coming. Obviously. Nick calms down a bit, and eventually we make our way into downtown and our hotel, and the first chance to toast just a taste of freedom from the ranch. While we're here, we stroll the city. Rapid City is primarily a city for tourism in South Dakota. With Mount Rushmore close by, it's the destination of millions of people each year. For us, it's just a chance to get away. And our first stop is an adventure in an escape room. If you've never been to an escape room before, I actually recommend it. It's more fun than you think it would be. The premise is this. You get locked in a room and you have to solve a series of problems to get out. One clue leads to the next and eventually the exit. The dead man's hand will lead you through the bookcase to easily escape Jack's camp. Yep. But that's that's the only thing that's uh Yeah, that thing's not attached to it. Broken. Right. I, I think and one one clue is gonna lead I looked up there. But oh, I, yeah. I, I might have missed something happened. Something just clicked? Something clicked. Oh, that box just opened. And oh, there's, there's a bottle of booze. And then there's Scrabble letters. What does oh, it say? What does it say? Gold to pay. Gold to pay. I'm okay. going to leave that out. Nice. Well, they can't get it. Oh, there we go. Oh, another clue. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, more money. It says, Wild Bill, I love you. I can see through your mental impairment oh, to the wonderful man you are. I don't even care that you cheat from under the table in your favorite. All the bullets around the bar to make sure no. One has a chance to shoot you on the way out with all of the bullets taken. Okay. Wait a minute. Blues are worth 10. Blues are worth 100. What the hell is that? <laughs> One room leads to the next, <laughs> where more puzzles await. Our puzzle centers around the murder of Wild Bill Hickok and the escape of his killer, Jack McCall. We need to escape through the butcher and hopefully make it out within the one hour allotted. Yeah. 
was fun. I really didn't think it would be that hard. That was the easy one? That was the easy one. And after a visit to the oldest bar in Rapid City for a drink, <laughs> it's time to turn the cameras off and time for Aaron and I to head out and enjoy ourselves for the rest of the night. The next day, a little hungover, we head out again. Still sticking close to downtown, finding an alley of artwork set aside by the city for artists from the area to tag and use as one of the largest and probably most legal canvases I've ever seen. Aaron finds an olive oil store and spends a bunch of time perusing the hundreds of different types of cooking oils here. This is probably a lot of what Aaron's heaven looks like and smells like. For our final stop of the day, it's off to go-karts, something I've been waiting for the whole trip. The escape room was fun, but where else can you drive fast and smash into your friends without someone calling the cops? Now, because of safety concerns, they wouldn't let me strap a camera to my go-kart, but you get the picture. Round and round for eight minutes at the rate of about a dollar a minute. But boy, is it fun. Aaron, actually won the race with the best time but that ends our 24-hour vacation and then it's time for the trip back home and back to the ranch where all looks well nothing appears to have burned down and that's a good thing and not long after being home it's time to check the animals who have been on their own for the past 27 hours or so first stop is the bulls to make sure that they're all in and where they're supposed to be the horses who still look happy, and Hyro is still as jealous as ever over my attention. Aaron's high tunnels are still standing, and the cows are not only right where I left them, but they seem to have missed me as they all come over to say hi. The pigs, well, they're still pigs, and they still have food left. And with that, I can park it for the night. Tomorrow, however, is another work day on the ranch, and we're now 28 hours behind. But I'll take it. It's well worth it. So tired. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> so we're back home. And are you happy to be back home? Yeah. Are you I'm really? Exhausted. <laughs> it's funny how you can leave <laughs> on vacation, even a little tiny short vacation, and come home and be like, I need to sleep. I don't sleep well in hotels. I don't sleep well in hotels either. I think I looked at the clock at two o'clock and I was kind of sleeping and woke up the first time at five forty five. So Yes, well, I, I don't know how long I slept or when I slept, but I know I didn't sleep well. So that's just hotels for you. Yeah. But I mean, it, so it's something that we have to, we have to do more of, don't you think? I agree. Yeah, it's been a long time. Like we can't even remember the last time we went on an adult's trip <laughs> without the kids. <laughs> like it might have been before we had kids. I, th well, I, I think mean, it was before, it was probably between Grace and Lincoln. Yeah. It's the best I can remember. It's all a blur. <laughs> exactly. And one of the nice things is that, you know, you and Stephanie put this whole, th whole thing together, but it was also a vacation for Nick, who works just, Nick owns yeah. his own electrical company, so he works just as hard as we do. I think that's why it's nice to go with Nick and Stephanie, because they're small business owners, and, like, we, like, understand that, like, you, you don't work for somebody else, so you work you work more than 40 hours a week. You do what you gotta do. It's, you work weekends, you work nights. It's, you know, their job a lot like ours doesn't stop. No. So, no. Nick answered his phone the All whole the drive time. over, you know, yeah. so. Very true. All right, so that's it for us uh, for today. Aaron's gonna get some rest. I'm gonna go make a video <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll get some rest eventually. But I hope you enjoyed uh, what you saw. We, you know, it's just a little, you know, the, the, I didn't think about it, but the whole escape room really tied in to the escape from the ranch. 
It was so much fun. The escape room? Yeah. What, do you, what was better for you, the go-karts or the escape room? Escape room. Really? Yeah. I like the go-karts, but we, the escape room was cool. We've done go-karts before. Right. And they were fun. They were a blast. And I had the fastest lap. You did have the fastest <laughs> lap. Aaron kicked all of our butts. <laughs> All right, so anyway, like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope that you can subscribe. Uh, click the, the thumbs up button if you'd like and leave a comment. Talk about you know what you guys do uh, to get away from your life because I think that it is very, very much that you have to kind of get away from life, reconnect as a couple, and get a, <laughs> a fly. <laughs> get a chance to, that fly wants to say hi. <laughs> it flew in front of the camera. <laughs> and then get a chance to, uh, you know, to, to reinvigorate everything yeah. all tomorrow. at once. Well, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Well, reinvigorate. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll start that project. <laughs> all right, guys, have a great night and uh, even a better week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. <laughs>